Okay, we have here today another integral from the MIT integration, be 2024. This was problem five. We have the integral from zero to two pi, arc cosine sine x dx. Okay, the first problem I noticed with this is just kind of having sine inside of the arc cosine. It'd be great if it was cosine here or if it was arc sine out here. What I would really like to happen if this was an easy problem, kind of some wishful thinking here, but if we had something like if we had arc cosine, cosine x, dx. Because the nice thing about this expression, this is actually x, but only some of the time. This is x, but we need our bounds of this in the first quadrant. If we were going from 0 to pi over 2, this would be just x. But I also want to notice if we had another integral in the first quadrant from 0 to pi over 2, and we had this one in sine, this is going to work the same way because, again, this becomes just x the same way right here. This is just x. But now it turns out converting this expression inside the integral, that's going to be easy. We can easily we can get this expression to look like one of these. The more tricky part, I think, is the bounds. We're going to have to deal with the bounds afterward. But first, let's just kind of rearrange this using some trig identities. So we'll start with this identity here related to the complementary angle formula that if we have arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x, it's just equal to pi over 2. Well, in our expression, we have arc cosine. So really what I want to do is isolate this arc cosine term. So if I just rearrange it, subtracting arc sine on both sides, we end up with arc cosine x is the same thing as pi over 2 minus arc sine. And then, of course, in this expression, our input is just x. But what I can do is I can use anything here. So I can actually use our input from the integral. So instead of using x here, let's just use sine. So I can say that arc cosine of sine x as pi over 2 minus arc sine of sine x. And so that way, we have a way to rearrange this where we get this term that we wanted right here. So we'll take all this stuff here and we'll put this back in the integral and continue. Okay, so now back to our integral and you can see I took that expression from the previous board and we split this into two integrals on the minus sign. Now this first one here, that's just a constant. So this one, this integral is going to be real easy. Focusing on this second one, again, this would be x, but we still have a problem with our bounds because in the region from 0 to 2 pi, it's not always going to be x. We do have the option where we could just break this up into, I think, three or four integrals. I always find that kind of messy, so I like to try to manipulate this a different way. So what we can actually do on this is just use King's principle. So that tells us that if we have an integral from B to A, we can just manipulate that and get back the same integral, but our f of x becomes f of B plus A minus x. So just focusing on, our integral he on the integral here, we'll call this I. And when we do this operation on this, our B plus A value here is going to be 2 pi plus 0. So this is just going to be 2 pi. So then we can just go ahead with this, and what's going to happen is our bounds our bounds stay the same. They're still going from A to B. We'll have our arc sine. Now on the input on the sine, what's going to happen is now we have our 2 pi minus x. So let's just put that in right there. This is going to become 2 pi minus x dx. But then we can rewrite this right here. Because this right here is we've got sine shifted by 2 pi, but we have it reversed. This is actually going to be minus sine of x. But now this isn't too bad. Let me just rewrite this really quick. So what we end up with here, again, this is still our i value. So we're going from 0 to 2 pi, and we have arc sine, and this is now going to become minus sine x. But then arc sine is actually an odd function, so this minus sine, I can bring it out front here, and we can bring it out front of this expression, make this a plus. But actually what I want to do is really let's just bring it out front of the whole integral. So we do that, and we have the minus sine here, but then what just happened is everything right here is exactly the same as this. So this is just i. Then what we found is just that i equals minus i. I can add an i on both sides. 2i equals 0, or i just equals 0. But if this here is 0, then this whole piece of the integral goes away, and we can just focus on this easy integral right here. OK, so now it's easy integral time. Of course, this is a constant. We can bring this out front. And so when we integrate this, we just get pi over 2 times x evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Plugging this in, we're going to have pi over 2. We plug in 2 pi, we're going to have 2 pi minus 0 here. Distributing it out, this is nothing. Pi over 2 times 2 pi gives me my final solution of just pi squared. Okay, there you have it. Really good one from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.